Wiki technology was invented decades ago to improve how software developers communicate. Today, Wikipedia has taken the ideas of the wiki to a new level, creating a free knowledge graph for the world to learn from. Ward Cunningham invented WikiWikiWeb in 1994, far before Wikipedia existed. Ward joins us today to discuss the first wiki and how wikis have changed the way that information propagates. He's not just an expert on how to write software. Ward is an expert on the software developer's experience. And today we discuss how to build a community where software developers can overcome the fear of building something that has not been built before. After a word from our sponsor, we will get to this episode of Software Engineering Daily. Engineers love automation, and Wealthfront automates your investing. As a software engineer, there are certain processes that you want to execute no matter what, like integration tests during a build. You wouldn't execute integration tests manually. You would use a continuous integration tool like CodeShip or Jenkins to automate your integration tests. Wealthfront is a tool to automate investing. Just like a continuous integration tool runs your tests automatically, Wealthfront can reinvest your dividends automatically and perform tax loss harvesting automatically. To get your first $15,000 managed by Wealthfront for free, go to Wealthfront.com slash SE Daily and get started with Wealthfront's layer of automation on top of your portfolio. Wealthfront.com slash SE Daily. Check it out. It would support Software Engineering Daily, and you will get $15,000 managed for free if you sign up. Automate your investing. Get back to the things that you can't automate, like writing code. Ward Cunningham invented the first wiki and helped develop early ideas around extreme programming and design patterns. Ward, welcome to Software Engineering Daily. Oh, thank you. In 1994, you developed the first wiki called WikiWikiWeb. When you started working on WikiWikiWeb, what was your vision for the software? Well, it, uh, uh, in 94, we held our first uh, plop conference, uh, Pattern Language is of Programming. And uh, that was at the uh, University of Illinois. And and my colleagues there said, uh, gee, we think these patterns should be in a hypertext. And we've got this new thing at Illinois called uh, Mosaic and uh, uh, World Wide Web and all that. And they said, I should, uh, I should set one up. And uh, I said, well, okay, makes sense. And uh, so I set one up and uh, uh, asked people to send me, uh, send me patterns and uh, wrote a little Perl script to convert them to... Uh, to uh, to to uh, HTML and uh, nobody could follow my simple instructions. So then, uh, you know, in early '95, I I wrapped that same little script around with a uh, with a web form. Forms were actually fairly new at the time, and uh, you know, so that they could see what they're getting and they could tune their format to uh, to what I produced. I I made it intentionally simpler than HTML because. Uh, we were there to explore uh, the the software patterns, uh, to write them and to uh, connect them. So uh, uh, the linking was the most important part, and uh, basic formatting, and it was uh, it, and it worked. It worked in in ways that were more complicated, more sophisticated than I even intended. But I just wanted to be able to, uh, you know, to read what other people were writing. Absolutely. And you've described yourself as being interested in how information moves around communities. Why does this subject interest you? Well, well you know, I, at that time, I'd spent 10 years in uh, uh, the research labs at uh, Tektronix. And Tektronix is a, a, a strongly engineering, lots of electrical engineers there. And, and they were, uh, well, one reason they hired me is that I had uh, large and small computer experience uh, in from the university and they said well we want to, we want to do software better but uh, you know I found that uh, engineers are uh, very project oriented and, and they didn't want to try things that they hadn't seen work before and uh, that idea that well well what do you learn when you when you see something that has worked before and and 
you know, how is that decision making happen? Uh, people don't, you, you know, by that, at that time, the culture was all about, you know, mathematics and science and uh, uh, proving things. But, uh, you know, lots of decisions are made without a proof. And I was interested in how that happened and especially uh, how it would happen one place and then spread to another. These days, we take the web for granted, but you've been building software to study how information moves around these communities, particularly of developers, like you said, um, since before the web. I'd love to know how you see the difference between how information moved around different communities before the web and and how some of those constraints have been removed since the web's inception and development. Well, now you're taking me back here. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I do remember because, uh, you know, I was not a particularly academic person, but, uh, you know, our field was young at the time and, and I subscribed to three or four uh, uh, ACM uh, uh, newsletters. And, and these would be special interest groups would... Uh, would, uh, you know, it's not, wasn't quite mimeograph, but, uh, you know, they'd be, uh, 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 paper bound. It wasn't a journal, uh, wasn't peer reviewed, but people would just, uh, send in letters. It was, it was like, uh, net news only on paper and, and they, uh, they'd come and I'd read them. And, uh, I just, I just found that, uh, if I read an article that I liked, I would just type a line in a file that was my one line summary of what that article should have been titled if it was written just for me. And, and of course, what, what journal it was in and, uh, you know, which volume. And so after a while, people, you know, people would be by the desk and we'd be talking about something and they'd say, well, I'm, you know, I really think that we ought to be doing this. And I said, well, yeah, I read something about that. And I would just grep you know, this directory full of one <laughs> file for each journal. And because I'd written my own titles, not try to remember their titles, I, uh, I could find things. And, and that really surprised me. Uh, and, and it made me feel like I was a part of a uh, worldwide community because uh, somebody was uh, shipping those things out. And, uh, it uh, it also made me feel like I was a, a real contributor to my community. Well, it's so interesting because it sounds like you built your own index. Yeah. Oh, exactly. And, and you know, it was uh, I, I had a, a file for each of the things I read, and and you know, I don't I don't think I took that stuff with me when I left the company after uh, all those years. It would be uh, it would be really interesting to look at it now. Hmm. But that that ability to retrieve it, and, and essentially, I, the other thing I was doing is I was developing a vocabulary to talk about the things that I was interested. I had my preferred word for something, and the fact that I wrote it in my word. We, we did an email system once too, uh, uh, Kent and I, and uh, it's Kent uh, Beck. Yeah, Kent Beck and. Actually, I say Kent and I, you know, I would, I was not responding to my email. So, uh, so he wrote an email system, but I said, you know, I want to save email, but I want to rewrite the subject line to be the subject line it should have been. And so I could find emails and, uh, uh, that worked the same way. It was, it was really great. If I wanted to keep an email, I didn't keep all the email, but, uh, you know, when I kept an email, I just put the subject line it should have had. And people, people were really insulted when they heard that I was tampering with the mail they sent me. <laughs> you know, that surprised me, right? But uh, Why did they feel yeah, insulted? It, I don't know. I, uh, I also deleted the paragraphs that I didn't want to see again. You know, I just kept the paragraphs that were meaty. And, you know, there's kind of a chatty nature to mail sometimes. Or in all those, you know, five-line footers, you know, tch, gone. You know, so it was... Uh, it was concentrated. And so, so in a sense, I, I had this, you know, and I don't know where it came from, but this, this uh, idea that if, if it was in my possession, it was mine. Uh, and, and of course, my motives were, you know, to just understand things better and share knowledge, you know, so I wasn't devious in any sense. But, uh, you know, I just, I just thought, you know, that the people of goodwill should, should uh, contribute 
any way they can. So, and, and you're touching on some early methods of sharing and saving information that you developed yourself. And it sounds like they were somewhat unique at the time, especially since they were offensive to some people. Um, and one goal that you had with your initial wiki software was to facilitate communication between software developers. And it sounds like a lot of the the communication that you were just having with people in general was with software developers. So I imagine you were starting to become quite familiar with some of the canonical problems of developer communication. What are those canonical problems? Well, the one of the biggest problems is to to uh, know how to know how to write a program in a particular style, and and uh, uh, you know the first time you try, you know maybe it's a new programming language that has features that you never had before, or uh, uh, there's an expectation in the program uh, that. Uh, uh, you know, and in, in fact, this, these styles, you know, come and go. Um, so, so we're still facing this, uh, this issue. How do you, how do you, how do you program a service that doesn't stop? All right. I was always interested in programs that didn't stop, you know, cause you know, all, all of computer science was focused on stopping programs, you know, keeping them from going into infinite loops and, you know, the so-called halting problem. You know, a program that didn't halt was considered defective. You know, but now, <laughs> now it's something else. So, so, so there's just you know. Now uh, it's the opposite. Right, right. So the uh, uh, the the thing. I mean, I was lucky to be in a lab where there were people who were pioneering, and, and in our case, it was mostly small computers in uh, you know industrial control, uh, instrument control kind of applications. But that meant it was tied in with a with a history of measurement and and uh, accuracy and uh, performance and uh, you know that was a, a deep uh, a belief system at the, among the electrical engineers and I found I had electrical engineering in my background so I felt like I was a part of it but the skill I brought was you know coaxing these little computers to do amazing things and uh, the. Uh, the, the the let's see now where was I I'm kind of rambling here the 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 the, the idea is what was the uh, what were the things the canonical that problems on? of developers developer communication yeah yes yes and that that is uh, well if you're developing for yourself it's one thing you know then it's kind of more like an art form but if you're developing for others it's it's uh, uh, recognizing and solving the problems uh, on a schedule and and uh, uh, if you've written the program before, then you have a pretty good idea of what you have to do and you just write, you know, another version of the same program. But, uh, if it's a program that you've never written before, or maybe nobody's written before, you have to kind of learn how it should be programmed. And that, that, uh, that's a creative act. And, and I, I would say the, the biggest problem that we confront is having the confidence before you've succeeded, that you will succeed, that, that you can write a program that's never been written before. And uh, uh, there's, there's a lot of obstacles because, you know, every line of code is a, uh, you know, two or three or four decisions that you have to make. So you're making lots of decisions. And we thought, well, you know, the, the, the value of these different styles of programming is you can adopt the style and then the decision form is made for you. You know, you're going to use an event handler and you're going to dispatch events. And so how do you do an event handler? Now, now what your particular events are and how they're going to be handled, that's part of the creative part. But, you know, if you need an event dispatcher, you just put one in. And that was actually a fairly new form back in those days that came with desktop computing because before that, you wrote a main program that sequenced all your your computation, you know, it uh, read a line of input and wrote a line of output. That's kind of how you wrote programs. And, and so uh, making something uh, that was more dynamic uh, was new. So I feel like this issue of confidence that you're talking about is, is quite interesting because 
there are many developers these days, particularly new developers, who feel a sense of something called imposter syndrome. I don't know if you've heard that term before, but uh, I, I have. It's a, it's an interesting term because uh, uh, I you know I would just call it fear. Yeah. But uh, 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 but but no, I think it's I think it's a very real issue. It's a particular type of fear, and I think it comes from people who enter software development after having a long period of time of doing work that is a little more recipe based or a little a little bit perhaps less creative but maybe it has something to do with school systems that are built off of the industrial age assembly line style but programming does necessitate this degree of creativity and um, aggressive stretches of the imagination and the ability to project yourself forward into a future where you have completed something that has not been done before, which can be quite a stretch of the imagination for people who feel like the only work that they're capable of is, is assembly line work, which sometimes the education system can train people to mistakenly believe. Um, Yeah. Like there's a, there's a right way to program and a wrong way. And, and if you're having trouble programming, you must be doing it the wrong way. Uh, but the, but there's an, there's another thing, and that is, uh, you know, if you're if you're creating a program that hasn't been written before, or for some equipment that never existed before, or something like that, then you're you're facing this uh, this this unknown. You, you don't know what the program is going to be like. But you might look at other people who are working on similar tasks, and and you can you can see their finished programs, and you say, well, their program works. And I don't even know where to start, you know, and, and so it, it's easy to compare yourself to people around you, but you can't see in their heads, you can't see their fear. So, uh, you know, in fact, we try to hide it, I guess, too, you know, say, well, no, I think I know how to write this program. Just give me a day. And uh, uh, so, so, so that actually was a, a, a big obstacle uh, because, because in the, in the nineties was when, Programming, programming was reaching further than it ever reached before. It was a kind of an elite thing when there was only one computer in each company. And uh, once there was one computer in each desk, there was just a need for a lot of programming. So there were a lot more people programming, a lot more challenging things, a lot, you know, uh, to, to get things done, you actually had to work in teams. And so that, that made this, this, uh, this idea that we have to meld our mind somehow to face this creative challenge, uh, uh, that much, that much more relevant. And maybe it wasn't so relevant before, you know, when computer programs, when the one computer in the company was programmed by the one physicist who was used to solving complicated mathematical problems. And when you're talking about these communities of developers that are working together, perhaps a, a company or an open source project of of a team of developers working together and and the how the communication styles are different within a larger team than in you know maybe a couple individuals working together or even an individual communicating with herself or himself um i mean you've described your interest in studying how computer programs work in emergent systems and i think that these days many of the best computing resources come from these emergent systems like open source software or wikis or things like Stack Overflow. What are the properties of a successful emergent system where large groups of people are working together to have this thriving knowledge base? Mm. Well, prob- probably number one is... Uh, they have to be able to talk to each other about meaningful things. And, uh, uh, you know, we would call those patterns at some time. Here's, here's something I, I mentioned, the uh, event dispatcher, right? And if, if I said event dispatcher and you didn't know what I was talking about, we would have to go to the whiteboard and draw a picture of a, an event dispatcher and so forth. But if we've, if we've done it before and agreed upon the name, then we can say, well, we'll have the event dispatcher, blah, 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 and, and, and the job is done. And, and uh, some of the most challenging programs, uh, 
yeah, you know, uh, and 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 they existed. Uh, you know, it came from the uh, AI labs. You know, where people they say, well, I should write a program that thinks, and and you know, they had powerful tools in that. But it was also, uh, you know, a community there. Maybe they were working on different things. Everybody's working on their own PhD, but they would uh, share a vocabulary. And, and that allowed them to talk about problems or maybe even think in terms of those words that they had learned that uh, people didn't have outside of those labs. And, and uh, like I said, I worked in a, in a research lab, mostly engineers, but, you know, we felt that a little. And we tracked what was happening in the labs. And, and uh, the real boost for me is when I got connected with uh, uh, small talk, which had grown up. Uh, again, in that spirit of labs at, at Xerox Park, and and just embodied uh, the thought processes that you know it had existed for a decade before. You know, it was it was it was sort of crystallized in small talk, and you know, I could I could see the value of it, but then I, but then I, it's like, well, how come how come we didn't do that, or you know, we. Tektronics had been around for more than ten years, and it, and uh, and maybe it had in in hardware, but it hadn't in software. So that that's the uh, that's the process. Being able to elevate the level of conversation to the point that you're still communicating, but that you're talking about abstractions in your words that match abstractions that you could. Uh, uh, build in the computer. And, and that, that we, we were aware of that it, it was later that we kind of stumbled across, uh, Christopher Alexander's work and, and he was interested in that process too. And, and, uh, uh, drew diagrams of how ideas reinforced each other and, and eventually called them patterns. In these types of systems, these emergent information sharing systems, how important is consensus? Uh, I'm not sure it's too important. I think diversity is probably more important that, uh, you know, that, that you could, you, that you have the freedom to take a contrarian view and explore it. Uh, you know, it's hard to do that when you're on the clock, you know, when something has to be done by the end of the week, but, uh, preserving the ability to try something different so that you can, talk about it from from the point of view of experience. Uh, Is there a trade-off between encouraging consensus on a platform and encouraging contrarian healthy conflict? I wouldn't call it conflict. Um, I, it, it's... Uh, it, it was really more about uh, who's in control of what questions you're asking yourself and answering on a moment by moment basis. You know, if, if you have the, you know, I feel a certain amount of freedom where I work now and I, I'll talk to my colleagues and I'll say, well, we ought to try that, you know? And I would say, you know, that's probably worth two days worth of work. But if the end of two days, it's not gotten any place, we ought, we'll be, we just have to be prepared to walk away. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that, uh, you know, I think there are places where you can't get two hours to go do something just because you think it would be interesting. And and uh, maybe if you're if you're a PhD student, you get to take two years, right? And, you know, because you keep paying the university, you know, for that privilege. But uh, yeah, so so with that in mind, you know, you're you you've talked about the the openness and the flatness of lab environments where people can are free to explore new ideas talked about perhaps the place where you work. I think you work at New Relic right now? Yes, yes. Okay. So, so you have some freedom to experiment there. And then obviously in open source software, people are completely free to experiment. But there are many companies, and you kind of just mentioned this in, in contrast to maybe a place like New Relic, that companies that are still structured as hierarchies and perhaps they don't encourage the type of emergent development uh where experimentation is encouraged why aren't more companies structured in a way that encourages 
flatness or emergent systems or experimentation? Well, um, some, sometimes they just don't have the budget. You know, they, they, they don't actually want to be developing software, but they have to develop software and they just want to get it done and get on to the next thing. And, and uh, so they're understaffed in a sense. And, and uh, uh, you know, developers in that environment know that there's far more to do than they'll ever get done. And so efficiently budgeting your time is, is a more important skill than creating things that have never been done before. You know, you, you say, well, let's just not write that software. Let's just go find a package and install it and, and, uh, and get on to the next problem. That's, that's, uh, you know, that's computers are very flexible. They can be programmed lots of different ways, but the, uh, the, the, the idea that we've, that we know and, and are distributing all the packages that we'll ever need. Well, that's crazy. You know, the computers are so more, much more powerful this year than they were last. You know, discovering ways to use that power is, is one of the exciting things uh, to, to, be, to be doing. And so uh, uh, I, I guess a, a company has to be organized in such a way that it can take advantage of what it discovers. And, and I, I'll tell you, a lot of discoveries I make are very small discoveries. They're, they're little ways that we can work a little better. And it's usually addressing, you know, uh, just day-to-day problems. I said, well, why don't, we, uh, why don't we let the computer help us do that? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, that's, uh, that's still create, creative, and, and people feel the difference. Uh, but the uh, uh, big, big creation, uh, I, I guess we have to say, um, do we expect computer programmers to create things? You know, or is that, the, uh, is that a different person? Somebody in marketing is supposed to invent, you know, the next product. And, and uh, maybe they're more informed than computer programmers, you know. It, uh, well, hopefully, hopefully it's not mutually exclusive. Uh, but but in, in any case, I mean, for software developers, many, uh, many early software developers, probably your wiki was the first place where developers were talking about this software engineering experience, uh, you know, some of the softer philosophical subjects that we're discussing are, are have to do with the developer experience. You know, many of the shows that we do on Software Engineering Daily are not soft like this. You know, we talk about JavaScript frameworks or distributed systems problems, but this conversation is, is more about philosophy. And uh, I, I find this area really interesting because I think it's, it's perhaps something that is harder to encapsulate in in online reading material. So, what are what did you do on WikiWikiWeb Wiki Web or in, in you know subsequent projects to encourage people to have good philosophical discussions about software development and 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 how do you see that uh, manifesting on on more modern platforms today? Well, well uh, you know, we were we were interested in in why why people had trouble understanding the value of uh, object oriented programming because uh, that was the new thing that was the new style and 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 we were immersed in it you know because we were slipstreaming behind all the work done at Xerox Park for the decade before and and we thought well because people have trouble thinking in those terms so we had to figure out what was causing that trouble? Why, why was it not easy to, uh, to use this powerful new computing uh, paradigm? And, and, you know, it was this, well, you don't have the thought paths, you know, worn in your, in your head, but there, there's, there's also uh, this, this organizational issue. People don't expect you to be sitting there, uh, you know, kind of daydreaming almost uh, about what the computer might do. And, and, uh, and I think I just drifted off of the question. Remind me of the question. Where am I going? Well, I was, I was discussing like the, the idea that uh, software developers, like early software developers perhaps were using your wiki software as the first place to develop to talk about the software developer experience Yes, yes. in contrast to like, doing a looking at a man page and finding like just the raw information of 
how computing proceeds. Uh, and I'm just curious about how how what you see as important in de- developing a platform where people are discussing the software engineering experience as opposed to the raw computing concepts. Yeah, it, it was it was something that we were interested in and we thought we had a solution in, in the sense of these uh, patterns if we just got the patterns down and it was a little more flexible than mathematics mathematics was the model before that you know that the the computer was a mathematical thing but but part of it was also that we recognized that we didn't have without mathematical proofs we didn't have a basis to judge things other than uh, one's experience. So, so I had this rule. It, it's kind of like uh, Wikipedia has a rule that says everything has to be uh, referenced. Well, we were doing new things, so there was no reference. We were pioneering it. But I said we need to talk about experience. What was the experience of using you know, one style versus another style or one pattern versus another pattern? And, and, and the way I'd say it is people would always say how you ought to write a program. You know, you ought to not make, make mistakes. Just, just write a program without making mistakes. If you were more careful, you would have fewer bugs, you know, and that's what you ought to do. And I said, I don't want to hear what we ought to do. I want to hear what you've done and what it was like when you did it. And that, mm-hmm. that twist uh, was embraced because uh, most people there were – uh, you know, in the original wiki, we're trying to understand patterns and there, we had a lot of patterns and it, uh, you know, over time it evolved to, uh, uh, extreme programming, which was, I think, a, a methodology that was, uh, you know, kind of designed for this, uh, you know, uh, uh, experimental emergent, uh, let's discover what we, we need instead of, uh, you know, specify it in advance. And, and so, um, uh, lots of patterns came out of that work and, uh, lots of evaluation. I mean, people would say, oh, well, this is crazy. You're talking about nuts stuff. This is cowboy coding, you know, it'll never work. And then for some reason they try it and they say, well, you know, we tried it. It it was very interesting. I'm going to do more of it, but it's not like you described you know, and, and I said, well, what, 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 I, you know, I wouldn't even engage in that argument. But the thing is, they couldn't understand what we were talking about until they had experienced some of it themselves. And so, mm-hmm. so this idea that, 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 you know, I mean, you know, it's kind of like trying to describe falling in love to somebody who's never fallen, fell in love, right? You know, and, and uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a creative act you know, or creating on a schedule even, you know, or creating, creating with others. A pair programming, for example, is, is very challenging for people to even imagine what it's like unless they've paired and paired successfully where, where your, your, your minds synchronize and uh, you're not speculating, you're just doing. It's very in the moment when it works well. And, and uh, you know, people will say, well, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to do that. They, you know, it just... I don't want to be slowed down or, or, or back to imposters. You know, might, people will discover that I don't really know how to program, you know, so, so those are two fears, but, uh, but when it works well, it's just, it's, it's like three times faster than you can program yourself. It's a net plus things speed up when you do it well, but uh, you know, you can't explain that to if, if, I mean, people, people could uh, understand it. I, I'm told that, you know, this is a well-recognized in psychology, like uh, there's an experience that uh, fighter pilots feel when they, you know, when they get very high above the earth and the sky starts to turn uh, uh, black and, and so forth. And it, it's, it's a sort of a, a feeling of elation. And, and uh, people who've flown at that level can talk to each other and they say, yeah, yeah, that feeling. But there's no, you know, we can't feel that feeling. We've never been close to that feeling. So it's, it's just not, uh, I mean, you could you know, say, well, elation, I've been elated before. So maybe it's kind of like that. But it's, it's, uh, it's experiential to, to understand. And, and I, I like to say, how much can we get out of an experience? How can we, how can we experience more? And that's, uh, you know, that's, that's been the focus 
uh, of uh, most of the work I've done uh, besides actually earning a living by, you know, doing that myself and helping others make valuable software. But the, uh, the, the, the part of it that I think I see faster than most people is, is uh, that I believe there's something, you know, deeply personal and natural and human going on as we construct these, you know, uh, abstract devices called computers. Totally. And I think there's also a certain elation that comes from knowing that you're doing it as part of a community. And I'd love to talk a little bit more about that. Like, I think building a community is so important for particularly like for somebody who's looking to get a product off the ground or who's looking to build a piece of open source source software. Like you can't build Hadoop on your own. You can't build um, I don't know, a, a successful JavaScript framework or Ruby on Rails on your own. You can't do these things on your own. And you've said that in order to attract a community, you have to make it feel like there is a community in the first place. So what are some ways to bootstrap and encourage a technical community? Well, well I did that on, on my first week. I was very lucky because there was already 500 people on a mailing list and we'd had a hundred come out to a, to an event. So there was, uh, on business, you talk about a going concern. Once you, once you're in business and the business is working, then you have a lot more opportunities to try new things. Well, we, we had a, we had a community, but then I said, well, there's this new thing that I'm, I'm calling wiki and it's on the web and, uh, you know, it's a little different and coaxing people to use it was a little tricky. So I, I knew, you know, a dozen very influential people in the movement, you know, for, because we'd put on this conference and had program committees. And so I invited them. I said, look, let's try this. I've written about 50 pages in a style that I think will work. Why don't you come over and write some pages? And about half of them did. I think I had six people come in there and and they'd put their names on pages and, and uh, you know, talk about the kind of things we were talking about on the mailing list, only they didn't disappear. You know, it wasn't this news feed. It was, it was something permanent. Uh, then, you know, after, uh, you know, so, so we had a miniature community, but it was a desirable community. And then we invited the rest. We said, come on out. And, and people would look at it and they say, oh, well, the people who I admire, the people who say the best things, on the mailing list, well, they're right here already, you know, and so, uh, so of course they wanted to be there. It was, it was attractive, and uh, sometimes people didn't write as well as other people did. But you know, I just every day I came in, and if there was something that wasn't done well, I just quietly improved it. You know, it got better. You know, I was an editor. I didn't claim to be the editor, but I did a tremendous amount of editing, and and because it didn't track who wrote every character. I could do that anonymously and, and uh, molded the community over a couple of years. You know, a funny, a funny thing happened about year four, I think. Uh, somebody had said something and I, I got a little snotty, you know, uh, a chip on my shoulder or whatever. And I, I wrote something, of course, I hadn't signed it, but it was sort of a, a conversation developing. And, and somebody Somebody came back after that and explained that that's not how we talk here in Wiki. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized, yes, absolutely. Thank you for calling me out on that. You know, so so there was there was this above all the words, there was this, you know, kind of attitude that was shared and and I molded it. Actually, my model, I'd been reading a lot of political opinion and I, I, I would read a political opinion piece and, and then the next week there would be the letters to the editors that were kind of discussing it after the fact. And, uh, you know, it was particularly articulate and I like that style. I also like the, the fact that when they were signed, they were signed at the bottom, you know, your, your name went at the bottom, you know, the ideas went first and people read the ideas and then if they cared, they'd see who wrote it. Um, which, which in email, of course, it's more like, Oh, you're reading a play and who's speaking now. You know, Othello is saying blah, 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 you know, uh, it, and uh, I, I didn't want that. I wanted ideas first. 
Mm. Very interesting. Yeah, it, it's so cool how even with anonymity, the community asymptoted towards something that was very healthy and something that was in line with your own beliefs. You were able to shape it to something that you thought was healthy and welcoming, despite the fact that it wasn't completely a- attributed to you. And 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 a lot of it was non-explicit, you know, wasn't signed by you, but you were just able to shape it anonymously. Right, right. Well, I'd been doing a lot of pair programming, so I just felt like I was pair programming or pair writing with these people. And, mm-hmm. and, and I wasn't going to correct grammar because I'm not all that good at grammar or spelling. But, but if, if someone wasn't taking advantage of the way Wiki worked, I would just edit it so that it did take advantage of the way that Wiki worked. I was showing off Wiki in a sense, but the, the other thing that happened is, is the net was young at the time. There wasn't too many things to do on the net. And, uh, uh, so I was good then at attracting the very people who I wanted to have a conversation with. And, and this actually became a problem after the fact because people said, well, this is really neat what you did. And I want to make a community to do this other thing. And they'd put up a wiki and people would try writing there and they'd say, well, but the community is over on Ward's wiki. So, <laughs> you know, it would, it would drift back. It, it kind of, had this this uh, suction of of conversation and and uh, you know of course if I were in the business if I was getting a nickel you know an article you know I'd love that yeah you know and 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 in fact uh, you know that's a business model now you know just get people to come talk on your site and charge them money or or sell their eyeballs or whatever it is we do but uh, it uh, you know it was it was a first then and and the. The, the net then was filled with people who had computers and, and uh, were interested in this sort of stuff. So it was, it was, you know, the right thing at the right time with the right goals of changing the way we computer program. And, and, and you know, Wiki is cool, but I'm much more proud of the fact that we changed the way people write computer programs. You know, the, the, the approach to computing is, is so much different than it was, you know, 20 years ago. It's, it's, uh, it's exciting. And, and I hear people talking in the hallway and they'll use words. And I say, yeah, that word was invented on my wiki. <laughs> okay. So fast forward to 2001 when Wikipedia was born, what were the things that Wikipedia did right early on that made it successful? Oh, I, uh, well, first of all, they, they, they caught that same emergent feeling, you know, there's a, Someone put up an old dump, you know, so you could read Wikipedia, you know, when it was uh, uh, three months old or something like that. And it was really crazy what people were doing. But they 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 did know what an encyclopedia was. And they said, well, let's try writing. Uh, But but there are a couple of things they did that are very good. One was uh, uh, be clear about the license. I uh, I was too lazy to. In fact, I, I think when I finally did say, I said, no, no, you're, 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 this, what you write is a gift to the community, but I'll own it. Thank you. <laughs> and and that was that was not quite right. You know, the open uh, creative commons is better. And, and I think that Jimmy Wales reached out to Richard Stallman and got a little uh, Stallman philosophy in, in Wikipedia. And it's it served him well. Because this stuff was uh, far less intuitive back then. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And and. Uh, the other thing they did is, is, uh, they made it international. They said, well, if we're going to make one, let's make a bunch of them. And, and, uh, that I think is, is very powerful. Uh, and, and, and again, in, in Jimmy Wales case, he traveled the world, you know, explaining that, yes, your country really does need a Wikipedia in your language and we'll host it for you, but it'll be yours. And that's uh, that's pretty that's pretty amazing that they, they had he had or the early community had that much insight. Uh, you know, the other thing, you know, there's some little things like a talk page. I, I had conversation mixed with patterns and I just said, well, you know, we'll kind of edit the conversation out as the pattern develops. But, uh, you know, putting it on a talk page made it 
made it look much more like a finished product without separating, without, without destroying the community. Mm. One challenge I've heard about when people want to onboard with Wikipedia is that it can be difficult for an editor to get started because uh, the, the environment can feel somewhat unwelcoming or just like the barriers to entry are so high because the standards are so high at this point, which is quite fair in some sense because so many people are using it as the knowledge repository. You really don't want to have bad information on there anymore. But uh, what are do you have any thoughts on how to keep the barriers to entry for a, a wannabe editor low on, on a site like this? I, yeah, you know, the, uh, there, there's a lot of work in this area. And I think the thing that works is, is, uh, uh, you know, forming a community of people who are learning that together and, and, and they have raised the bar every year, the bar gets higher, you know, of what you have to do to, uh, to, to write a good Wikipedia article or an acceptable one. And, and, uh, you know, we trust Wikipedia to be Wikipedia because that bar is that high. Uh, and, and, you know, it's kind of funny to read that old stuff, you know, cause it was silly, you know, by, by modern standards, but it is learnable and it, and it makes sense. And there's a reason, and there's a certain amount of, you know, jargon because they have these three letter codes for things that have been argued out in the past. You know, it's like, you know, quoting a building code by section number or something, you know, it's, it's, uh. Uh, you, you have to get used to that jargon and, and it's all well-defined, but you have to know where to read the definitions. The, it, 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 but, uh, uh, you know, there's a very interesting, uh, uh, uh Joel Spolsky, uh, visited, uh, uh, the, the, the Wikimedia foundation and, and gave a talk that was recorded where he talked about how they built the community around, uh, Stack, uh, stack overflow. And, and, uh, he had actually, you know, each one of them has a very well developed notion of, of how they manage the community. And his was different in very interesting ways. Uh, I think that, uh, both of them, well, for one thing, uh, you know, articles get reverted in, in, uh, stack overflow, but the, uh, the, the most interesting thing he said is he says, look, if, if, uh, if you have a problem and you reduce that problem to the smallest example that exhibits the problem, and then you post it and say, here's what I'm trying to do. And here's my best attempt. And it doesn't work. What do I need to do instead? He said, you'll never be reverted. Yeah. Because, because that is such a clear statement. It's a reproducible statement of what's wrong. And then somebody can answer you directly. Here's what's right. And of course, like I can, right. And, and, and then he said, if you think about it, at any level, if you're trying to be a computer programmer, that is a skill you have to learn. That is saying the taking my program that doesn't work and reducing it to the smallest program that doesn't work. And, <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, if people can learn that skill from his site, then, uh, then they are better off. Well, of course, in an encyclopedia article, you know, it's a different thing. It's, uh, it's how many references you have and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But, but that just tells you how, how important it is to, in a sense, have a vision of how your community is going to work and what is what belongs and what doesn't belong in the community and so forth. And, and, and a lot of wikis were made where it's like, oh, well, I put up a wiki. Now let's just make stuff. Well, what are we supposed to do here again? <laughs> you know, and and uh, community forming the same same thing when you you form an organization. You know, you get a, a new team. Uh, I like this idea. Teams here to write a computer program. Well, where are the specs? Well, we don't quite have the specs out. You know, the specs will emerge, but we have a charter. You know that this is this is why we're coming to work and doing this thing. This notion of a charter is is. Uh, um, uh, you know, kind of like saying, well, stack overflows for explaining programs that don't work when they've already been reduced to something small enough you can read. So what do you think of, of other community sites? I mean, there's obviously Facebook, 
and Quora. I think of these as more post-social uh, environments, but they do bear some resemblance even to your wiki technology um, that you originally developed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you have to admire what they've done. Uh, and and uh, I think it's, it's hard to to be the one site that everyone in the world's going to use unless you have a pretty big data center. So all this, uh, you know, data center operation stuff that people have learned how to do, uh, building, you know, Facebook and Twitter and those kinds of things. And, and, and I, I appreciate that so much of what they've discovered that they share into the open source. So you can see how that stuff is done. I like that, but it, it, it can only do things for which there's a business model, you know, because those data centers are expensive and somebody's got to pay the electric bill. So, so it, it's sort of self-limiting, mm. you know, it, it, that if you can't, like somebody was telling me how many, it was, it, it, it was uh, like one, 1. 1.5 billion users was about how many users you had to be, to be successful or something like that, or registers. And, you know, it's just like, that's crazy. But that's because, you know, the money comes from investors and, and they're looking for a return and, and they won't have enough eyeballs to be able to reach their liquidity event or something. It, it, it's, yeah. it, it, there's, there's, there's a formula there that is more about taking from the Internet than uh, – than delivering to the internet. You have to deliver something or you don't get the eyeballs, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, uh so, so, so I, uh, I, I, am kind of attached to that old model where you don't try to talk to everybody. You don't, you know, you, you, you keep the, keep your data center small. You know, I, I use these ones that are $5 a month and, uh, you know, find that, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty capable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, it, uh, it's just a, as the computing power gets cheaper every year, it shouldn't be more expensive every year to put something on the internet. But uh, somehow, somehow it is. It's it's hard to get on the internet now, and and uh, so that's my that's my open source project is trying to to tear that apart and. Yeah, so I was—I was—that was, was going to be my next question. I mean, uh, I know we're up against time. I'd love to get uh, an idea for what you're working on today. What you're excited about? Well, I, you know, I'm, first of all, I'm excited to still be programming. You know, just day to day, fingers <laughs> on the keyboard programming at my age. You know, I think that's an accomplishment, and and uh, you know, it comes from being willing to leave my expertise behind and enter a new a new paradigm of programming and, and, uh, you know, it's not, it's not any harder than it was when I was young. Uh, but I do understand people who get tired of having all their knowledge become obsolete every five years, but you know, I still enjoy it. But, but the thing that I've done and I'm, I'm, I'm approaching five years into it is, is to make a version of wiki that I had imagined for years before that, but, but the, uh, the single page application, the, the JavaScript is so powerful. That's, that, that's turned out to be the medium that, uh, will, will let me build the thing that I've always wanted to build. And that's, that's a, a, a distributed version of wiki where, where it's collectively owned. The infrastructure is collectively owned and, uh, Again, this is experiential. You know, I can describe it, and you'd say, "Well, that sounds weird. How does that possibly work?" But the uh, but but the idea is that uh, um, you write on your computer, and I'll write on my computer, but we'll use a single page application that reads from both computers and makes it feel like we're in one place. And and the thing that's really most interesting about that is I call it a neighborhood. You know, because if if we have a thousand people doing that, you know, I don't have to listen to a thousand people. I listen to the four or five people that are interesting in the moment that might be a neighborhood in this uh, federation of, uh, of wikis. And, and, and what I especially like about it, there's a lot of things you have to do to kind of keep the peace when you're sharing 
you know, one database, right? You know, this is the edit wars and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and they just disappear. You know, if you, you know, if, if you, if you take a three month vacation and come back, your wiki will be exactly like you left it because you haven't changed it. Now, people might have been reading it more and more and have learned more and the, and the conversation might have advanced while you're gone. Uh, but wiki has always been pretty good at that because you can catch back up because it's not, it's not like a, it's not like a news feed where you missed it. It's, it's, uh, it's organized. It's self-organized. Permanent. Yeah. And only. Yeah. And, um, so I write in this every day just to feel what it's like. And I, it's the, it's the best writing environment I've ever had. And, and there's a handful of us who watch what each other write. And we talk about wiki. We, uh, we also have a hangout that meets, uh, you know, once a week and, uh, and, and talks about how it's going because this is, it's more like, you know, poets reading each other's poetry, you know, it's not a conversation, but it is on a different time scale. And I like that kind of slowness, but it is, it is nice to get in and just face to face and talk about how it's working too, you know? So it's, it's, it doesn't have to be the only way we talk, but it needs to, you know, I'm exploring a way to be more wiki than any other wiki ever. How can people get involved with with this new wiki? Or what's the what's the title of it? Um, how can people find out and contribute and read read it? Well, it's uh, uh, it's I call it federated wiki. When I when I first started, I thought I could program it in a weekend, and and I called it the smallest. Federated Wiki, because I was interested in exploring <laughs> the idea of federation. And, well, it's not so small anymore, so we just call it Federated Wiki. And that, that uh, you know, search engines will find lots of stuff. Uh, I made a lot of movies the first year as, as new features came on, so you can kind of watch, you know, in little five-minute screencasts as I'm discovering it should do this and it should do that. And that's kind of neat history. Uh, there are... Uh, there's lots of sites, you know, again, it's distributed. I don't want to say here's the center, you know, cause there isn't a center, but, uh, you know, if you, if you, uh, if you look around, I will say that, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, there's an FAQ, a fact on, uh, on a site called fed.wiki.org that mentions how to find the, uh, how to find the, uh, uh, the, the hangout which we, we meet on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock Pacific time. And uh, uh, people are welcome to drop by. We have a lot of people drop by or we're developing other technologies and talk about that, but it's, it's pretty developer oriented or early user oriented. The other thing, since, uh, since there's no venture money involved, uh, you know, we're, we're letting it develop at the rate that it wants to develop, you know? And, and so we're more excited sure to see a new way to use what we already have rather than racing to add features. We, we try to try to use it in the most primitive way. And then we find that works and we say, well, how can we grease that? How can we add affordances? I guess would be the way. How can we put a little extra into the JavaScript to make it feel more like what we're liking, the feel we like. So, so maybe this is, 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 is emotion driven development. If, if we're liking it, we'd work harder on it. Sure. I can totally respect that. Well, Ward, uh, we'll put all those links in the show notes so people can check out Federated Wiki. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. And um, I'm a big fan of, obviously, all the technologies and theories and uh, work that you've developed over the years. So thanks for all your contributions. Well, and I appreciate you, uh uh, inviting me and pulling together this community that uh, that uh, in, in, enjoys your interest too. You know, you're very, very much like me. <laughs> well, I, I should hope so. 